Hello, welcome, welcome gorgeous beings of light. This is Elmara coming to you with the 100 Miracles in 100 Days project and the 5th Dimension Activation and Effortless Manifesting Quickie. So let us just begin by taking a long, slow, deep breath in and letting it out with a sigh. And if you're unable to take a deep belly breath, then just follow your breath in. And follow your breath out. And bring your awareness within. Let's do this several times. And when you're able, I want you to bring your awareness back into breathing in through the nose and out through the nose unless you're releasing meaning that you're yawning burping sneezing farting they're all good signs energy is moving if this is your first time you've landed here today know that these activations work by you just focusing on your breath and breathing the sound into your being as extraordinary source codes are embedded in my voice to help give you what it is that you need so and if you become irritated frustrated then they're all signs that my wonderful light is evoking your poop to the surface by you just listening and the trick is to keep listening and keep breathing so today we're on miracle 46 i think it is I just want to add from yesterday's miracle that after my father passed, I'd been awake all night except for just a few minutes when he slipped away and went home to God. And I was up until like two o'clock in the morning, had like one hour of sleep. And that pattern stayed for several days until I got back to work actually. I was sleeping just one or two hours and that I, I think in the period of that week he passed away on the Tuesday, so from the Monday night, but because I was there with Tuesday, on Tuesday, Monday night, all the way back through until Friday when I flew back home or Saturday. That week, that those five days, I was lucky if I got five hours sleep in those five days, and that's because that's the power of pure God source pumping through you. And that's the opportunity that you have if you stay fully present when someone you love dearly is passing over to the other side. So I had planned to move away and do something different, like tell a lighthearted car miracle. But something has happened again today to show me that I must tell you another miracle of someone passing over to the other side. And it's because it's such a, a, it's something that's filled with such doom and gloom and, and, and it keeps people stuck forever instead of recognizing the power and the beauty that happens when someone passes away. So this is more of a, a miracle about people wanting someone to stay and them going when it was their time. But before we do that, so we are going to do another one. I have another extraordinary story about when my brother passed away at only 46 years of age um, and I may leave that one to another day but because uh, something else came up about someone passing away today um, I feel like I need to tell another story about this so that it integrates into your mind the beauty that happens when someone we love especially someone we love and cherish is going home. And so you can be fully present and support them. You will gain so much healing and blessings if you can be fully present with the ones you love when it's their time to go. And when you realize that you still, that life is eternal and you still get to connect with them anytime you choose. So. But let's just start with the fifth dimension quickie activation. So just breathing in now. Bring your awareness into your hands. And breathe out. 
and then breathe in again and reach your hands up and breathe out pointing your hands to the sun and tie the energy as you breathe out from your fingertips into the sun breathe in and draw all that gorgeous light from the sun down through your body breathe it out the gorgeous golden source light from the sun and take the last five percent of that down and into the core of mother earth and tie that energy around to us and then breathe in i'm moving my hands up and down my body as i'm doing this so breathe in and scoop all that gorgeous energy from mother earth up and breathe that earth energy out into your body and take the last five percent up to the sun breathe in draw that sunlight down through your body let it fill every cell every atom every molecule of your being as you're breathing out and take the last five percent down into the earth breathe in and bring all of this earth energy back up breathe out and take it back up to the sun now if this is the first day you've landed here um, please know that this is best done standing barefoot on mother earth but if it's snowing where you are or night time you can just imagine that you're standing barefoot on earth in the early morning sun It is recommended that you do this in the morning. If you start doing it at night, it might keep you awake for hours once you get fully connected in. So um, it's best to do this in the morning if possible. But we know that the sun is out somewhere in the world because we used to run classes at night time and everybody still had a profound connection. So, And if you're unwell, you can lay down, but lay down on your side and imagine the same. So you can breathe up and down, the energy can go up and down your spine. And if you're seated, the energy goes out your feet and out, and if you're seated on the floor, it goes out your tailbone. But if you're seated in a chair, it goes out your feet and out your tailbone and down into earth as well. So, so breathing in, drawing the energy down from the sun, breathing out, letting it fill up your 100 trillion cells and your 100 trillion telomeres with the last 5% going down into earth breathing in bringing all that beautiful earth energy with all the minerals and nutrients and everything you need to sustain your physical life here on earth breathe it out into your body and take the last five percent up to the sun and this brings you into alignment with the earth and the sun so just continue doing that breath if you move away from that i want you to just breathe in and bring your awareness back it is at this point when you're in full alignment that you can say this way effortless manifesting comes in when you're connected to all that you are and can go god show me or god how can i god show me how can i have a fit and healthy body god how can i find my soulmate god how can i make a hundred thousand dollars this year god how can i build my own temple whatever it is just ask in this higher vibration and let it go and then follow the intuitive thoughts or hits that come in that might say go do this go do that and you can you know, they don't have to be big things everybody you could just ask can you please have a better job or can you have a pay rise at your job oh i've just remembered a fantastic miracle about someone that we'll, we'll tell that one tomorrow um, about a pay rise and a whatever. So just breathe for me. And I want you just to continue to breathe while I share with you today's miracle, which is really all about someone's time to go home. So this is about my best friend's mum. The story goes back almost 40 years. The miracle goes back almost 40 years it's and it's when i learned that as a healer we have no control over anything it's just our job to show up and hold space for people to be able to make their own choices so my best friend's mom gets cancer we're going to remember we're going back 40 years when the chemotherapy was terrible she almost dies from her first bout of chemotherapy She's really sick and they expected her to die from it. It was so bad. And she was in hospital. Um, oh, actually, at first I gave her a few healings. 
her sister brought her over to my house, or maybe maybe my best friend did, but I think it was her sister because he was working. And we did a couple of healings for her. Um, and But then she deteriorated rapidly and they took her to hospital. She took some of my amethyst crystals with her. And the doctor being obnoxious as they were 40 years ago goes, what's this to her? And she goes, oh, that's a crystal that's going to heal me. And he goes, well, it better bloody hurry up. I thought it was so, such a terrible thing to say to someone who's at the end of their life. But anyway, her family hold a bedside vigil with her 24 hours a day. There was someone with her 24 hours a day praying for her to stay. And to everyone's shock and horror, one week later, she's healed. And I was sending her healing all this time as well. I, I wasn't in the hospital, I was that day, but I wasn't there every day. I was just sending her healing from home every day, praying that she would get better as well, because that's what the family wanted. That's what my best friend wanted me to do. And one week later, I get a phone call from my friend saying, She's, she's well, she's coming home. And um, so they then, they then take, they all just go home because she was, she was better. Everybody was shocked. She had just become heaps better and she was coming home the next day. So everyone's shocked and horror, including all the doctors and nurses. She got well and she was coming home. Next day, Mrs. Shirley, her name was Shirley, but my upbringing back then was that you call people Mr. and Mrs. Or if they were a really close friend, you call them auntie and uncle, even if they weren't your real auntie and uncle. And she kept insisting that I call her Shirley, but my upbringing wouldn't allow me to do that. So I used to call her Mrs. Shirley, which is relevant to the rest of the story. Um, I get this phone call from my friend saying that his mum's coming home, everybody's excited. Next day, Mrs. Shirley gets up to go to the toilet and on her way back, she has a massive heart attack or stroke, can't remember which one now, and is dead before she hits the ground. Gone. Nobody can revive her. Just breathe for me, please. And it was devastating to all of us who had held this bedside visual. I was devastated as a healer. I thought I failed. You know, you gotta remember I was about 22, 23, 24 at the time. I was completely devastated about this. Six months, and I was devastated for my friend as well, you know. He was the baby of the family. It was just devastating for him. Just breathe for me, please. But six months later, I'm running a circle, training people to connect to their chakras and all that stuff, you know, just to run a meditation circle, meditation healing circle. And we had gone for coffee afterwards, and this lovely young man just says to me, like I couldn't feel her there. It's not what my gift is. My gift is in healing it. I mean, I'm much better at communicating with spirits on the other side now, and especially spirits that are in transition to the other side. It's one of my gifts. But um, I didn't have that then because I'm, you know, I'm. In, I was just at the beginning of my healing journey. And he says to me, this young guy says to me, oh, there's a little short round lady with dark curly hair sitting beside you. Do you know who it is? And I went, I couldn't even feel anything beside me. And he goes, oh, she's telling me her name is Mrs. Shirley. And I went, oh my God, you know, and I kind of like shocked and a bit hurt, and bit, not hurt, but like tears, like missing her because I was really close to Mrs. Shirley. 
and he says, she's saying to say to you, you did nothing wrong. It was her time to go home. You, nothing you could have done could have stopped it. You stopped it, all you did was delay her passing for a week. And she's not mad with you about that. This is a very big lesson for you to know that when it's someone's time to go home, it's time for them to go home. I couldn't believe it. I was just, but all of the guilt that I had felt back then about not being able to save her, so to speak, which just dissipated in that moment. And I learned way back then, 30, 40 years ago, it's not our job to save people. It's our job to reunite them with their higher self or their God self and to call in God. We pray and want them to stay. But what about if it's their time to go home? And what about if they've had enough? Now sometimes when you call in their higher self and all of their guides and angels, and that is the, so that's why sending healing without that person's permission is just a big fat no-no because of free will. You were supposed to, there's all these people that send Reiki all over the world or whatever. Unless you have their permission to do that, you should not be doing that. And everybody's going, oh, that's really old fashioned. But it's universal war. And sometimes you're just delaying their pain and suffering. And it's a really old universal law that with every man his dog getting a $50 Reiki Masters online certificate, that these important spiritual laws have been trashed. It is really, really important that you have someone's permission to send them healing. And that includes have permission to send energy into a war zone or into a storm. You should leave those things alone. You have no idea what you're doing and sometimes you're just increasing the energy that's there. And I can tell you another story about that, but I'll just leave it because I get in lots of trouble from lots of Reiki people when I do tell that. But what I can say to you is the best thing you can do for them is pray. When you don't have their permission, you pray and ask for their angels and guides to go be with them and to help them. That's, that's the correct universal way or universal law and way to help someone and let it go. Don't force your will on them. It is their life, their journey. And sometimes like this morning, somebody from America wrote and said, El, can you help and explain universal law? So I tuned into the person on their behalf and called in God and their angels and sent them to help them. But the person's soul recognized me immediately and it's probably because I'm 40 odd years down the track. And the person was communicating with me directly, asking me questions. So I was just answering them directly. I was not, I was just telling them how they could access God, how they could access their angels or whatever. Now, if you are strong enough or, or have like, really good skills like I have now 40 odd years later, you can do that. But I still didn't send her any healing. I told her how she could get that herself. I told her what, she, what her options were to stay or to go or whatever. And you can do those things, but you need to make sure. And I, you can tell that it's right because you can feel the light and you can feel the person. Alrighty. You are powerful beyond measure, and so are they. You know, if you want some more information, uh, Anita Jacoby, I think was her surname, although I don't know that there's, that surname is right. But she wrote an excellent book called Dying to Be Me. She healed herself in a stage four cancer and she was in hospital about to die when she made this connection to the other side. And that's a book worth reading. And you can pray and ask for the angels to help in that way. But you should not be forcing your will on someone else. So just breathe for me, please. And I'm just going to send you some 5D. I know it's going to rattle a few cages. Please don't write abusive messages to me. I won't read them and I'll just block you. So it'll be your loss because you won't get to see the rest, hear the rest of this fantastic 100 miracles in 100 days. So if you have some aversion to that, just sit and ask yourself why. But a lot of times it's because 
we want to control the outside circumstances instead of just allowing that person to communicate with God and have their own experience. So I'm just going to send you, you should know that when someone passes it is it's the most extraordinary love that they've ever known in their entire life and that's why some of them decide to stay when they've been given no time to live etc. But some of them still just want to go home because they're tired and that should be their choice. You know, they're an infinitely powerful being of light as well. They may have been crushed in their life circumstances, but that is still there and that comes to the forefront when they're at the end of their life. So, And if you tap into that energy, like I said at the beginning, when my dad passed, I had about five hours sleep in five days. I didn't need sleep because I was fully charged from when we took those 1,075 souls home. Just breathe. You can assist people by asking God and their angels to go be with them and that's it if you don't have permission. I'm just going to send you some fifth dimensional light. It up being a lot quicker. We have a quickie activation today, which is good. We need a quickie activation. Beautiful. Just breathe this light in and breathe it into any area of your life that you need it to be into. So you can breathe it into your work, breathe it into your relationships, breathe it into your finances. Just raise your frequency up into the light and let go of anything that's outside of the pure God source being of light you've always been. You're an infinite, eternal, rich, abundant, gorgeous, gorgeous, sexy, radiant, beautiful, powerful, beyond measure being of light. You always have been, you always will be. And you just need to tap into that and see what shows up in your life. Alrighty.